Hi everyone, this is Army Talk Retail. It is day two of NRF. We are live from the S from the formerly SES of Magatech, now Fusion Group's booth, booth 5420. I am Chris Walton. And I'm Ann Mazinga. And standing with us is John Jenkins, the VP of Amazon Just Walk Out. One of the coolest titles out there. Easily. <laughs> Easily. Welcome, John. It's a fun job to have. Love doing it. I, I gotta imagine so. Man, you get to try everything cool. But yeah, anyway. Um, well, tell us a little bit about you and your role at Amazon. Well, so, um, I don't know, I kind of claim I'm a walking contradiction. When I started at Amazon in 2004, I was working on the homepage optimization for Amazon to try and drive people to buy online. And now, here I am 20 years later, trying to come up with technology to get people to go back to stores and buy in stores. So it's like kind of an interesting sort of transition of career over the last 20 years. That is absolutely crazy, wow. Like, uh, so you went from designing homepages to now designing physical retail experiences. What's been, what, what are some of the big lessons you've learned along that journey? Because that's a long time too. Yeah, well, I mean, I think the thing that like, I've really learned is that you know, there's not gonna be a one size solution for yeah. any of this, right? Yeah. Like, you know, nothing's gonna go completely online, nothing's gonna go completely in store. And really having this sort of you know, omni-channel experience is where we're gonna end up in the long term. And so that's really what we're striving for on Just Walk Out, is we're trying to figure out a way that we can make, make it possible for you to buy anything without having to stand in line at a physical store. Yeah, and talk, I think it's important too, because we haven't talked about this in a while. I mean, I think the first Amazon Go store opened, if I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, was 2018? That's correct. Is that yeah. right? And, and what was the, the, the famous press release that went out around that? Like, what was the origin story of that first store? Yeah, well, at Amazon, we'd like to think about sort of long-term problems, okay. right? And so when we said, what's wrong with shopping at physical stores, um, you know, we said, well, you know, people hate standing in line. They hated standing in line in 1924. They hate standing in line in 2024. Yeah. They're going to hate standing in line in 2124, yeah. right? They hate standing in line in the U.S., in the U.K., in Australia. And so if you go try and solve a problem like that, that sort of transcends time and space, you know, you get to work on it sort of methodically over the yeah. long term and come up with a really compelling solution. And I think, you know, Just Walk Out is that solution. Yeah, and the other point about this too, which I want to get to later, is like, there's also a lot of things retailers hate about their retail operations, which this technology also helps solve, which you can almost write a press release on that too, but we'll talk more about that in a minute. Cool, yeah. Well, I, I want to talk about the, we just heard news last week out of Amazon about doing Just Walk Out in a healthcare setting so healthcare workers can just scan their badge. Talk a little bit about how this idea came to be and, and I think other concepts of kind of eliminating the app download first, which I think was a big friction point when, when Just Walk Out kind of came out. Yeah, so I think like Just Walk Out and similar technologies are known pretty well in the arena space or in the grocery store space, but, right. but there's a lot of retail problems that exist outside of that space too. So yeah. hospital workers are there 24 seven, right? Hospitals can't afford to staff those stores over the nighttime hours. Um, and so we asked ourselves, is there a way that we can implement a solution for people that want to get, you know, good quality food 24 seven? Um, and that's where we landed at on the healthcare. And so if you go to that store at Candler Hospital, um, you'll find that store, you know, staffed during sometimes, but overnight now doctors, nurses mm, can go right. get like decent food instead right. of having to like resort to a vending machine, which is what they would have had to do before. And and talk a little bit about the, the badge entry, like specifically why you're kind of exploring these other ways outside of app download to get into Or even palm way. scanning. Yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. So, why, so why not go palm scanning? Why'd you choose the badge there? Yeah. yeah so payment flexibility is really important. Mm. Um, and so in healthcare, it's just commonplace right. for uh, doctors, nurses, et cetera, to pay with their badge, which does payroll deduct. And okay. so okay. Um, for that hospital, we worked with them to implement that badge pay, which allows them to pay in the way they're used to paying it. Oh, got it, stores. okay. But beyond Why? that, like w payment flexibility is really key anywhere. So, you know, we support mobile wallets, we support, you know, credit card tap and dip, we support Amazon One Palm based payment. Mm -hmm. Um, Which really, I love. Yeah, by the and way. if you're your biggest fan of I that, am. yeah, you know, 100%. if you're a student at a university, we support you know student meal plans, mm. and so really people want to pay the way they're used to paying, and so Smart. you know we give them choice in that regard. Yeah. Well, and, and that's a really interesting point too, because like you you tested it a certain way to start, but then you've iterated it over time, probably knowing that it might not have been the right way in the, to begin with, but that you'll get to the right answer over time because you believe the problem is there that people don't want to wait in line, right? Yeah, exactly. This technology is going to grow and evolve. Like, yeah. like you know, from the early days, you've probably heard the phrase, you know, it's still day one at Amazon. Yes. Yeah. Oh, and, always. And I think, like, it's barely day one for autonomous retail. There's still so much to be done in this space in terms of payment, selection, um, you know, all kinds right. of stuff that's going to be really exciting. It's over 6 a.m. for autonomous exactly, retail. Exactly, right? yeah, 6 a.m. somewhere. Um, yeah. All right, so 
uh, so the other cool announcement that we've been following really closely around what you're doing is you've taken this to apparel, to, yeah. by way of fan experiences first. Um, talk about what goes into that. I imagine RFID is an important component of that. Can you talk about that a little bit? Sure, yeah. So um, one of the things that we've launched recently, and you'll find it at three stadiums in the U.S., at uh, Hard Rock Stadium in Miami, Globe Life Field in Texas, and the Seahawks Stadium in Seattle. Um, and it's here at NRF right now, too, right? Um, yeah, we have a demo over in our booth, so you awesome. can check it out there. Um, we've implemented a new type of Just Walk Out. So if you're tr familiar with our traditional stores, right, there's cameras on the ceiling yeah. that sort of track what's on the shelves and what's taken off the shelves. If you go check out the store over here, no cameras. Um, and what we've done instead... No cameras? No cameras. Wow, and so I what, didn't know that. Yeah, yeah so right. what, what we've done is uh, each item in the store has an RFID tag on it or embedded in it somewhere. And when you walk through the exit gate, the gate is going to read the tags that you have with you and charge you correctly for the items. And so this is a huge sort of revolution in Just Walk Out because wow. like in these traditional stores, right, the cost of the store right. kind of scales as a function of the square footage of the right. store, right? That becomes the number of cameras and other yeah. technology. In this store, all the tech is in the exit gate. And so... Right. You can deploy this to a small store or a wow. big store with no I change in price. Wow. So how is it tracking the individual's position throughout um, the store? So uh, we don't need to track the individual's position in the store. All we need to know is that when you tap your credit card on the exit gate and you walk through that gate, what you have on you at that time. And so so you're, it's a tap to exit, tap not to tap exit. to enter. Okay, and this is one it, thing that we... What you're holding with you that signals that that's what I have when I'm exiting the store. That's exactly. Like you can wear a hat out of that store. Heck, you could put a pair of pants right. on in that store and wear them out and it's going to charge you correctly for wow. those pants. And so, like, what that does is wow. it practically sort of eliminates what might be considered theft. Like, you put a hat on and you walk out of that store, we're charging you, you for the hat. For yeah, yeah right. right. Okay, so, let me, so then, but there are some limitations to it, right? So then, it sounds like everything has to be tagged with RFID for that setup to work. Is that correct? That's correct. And, okay. and this is sort of an interesting, uh, I think, we're on this like turning point for RFID. Like at one level, it's like the wow. oldest, most boring technology there is, right? It feels like NRF 1994 or something like That's that. Right. Right. Yeah, right. um, but I think like a spin that we put on it, and that like when my team came to me, I was like, oh, do we really want to be doing this? But what we said is like, okay, cool. Like RFID has been used to help the merchant for forever, right? right. Preventing yeah. theft, tracking inventory, et cetera, et cetera. What we said is, is there a way you can use RFID and help the shopper, right? And that's what we kind of have come up with. It's the first real use of RFID for the benefit of the shopper. And so I think it's really cool in that regard. And now when you pile on those merchant benefits and the shopper benefits, you can kind of push RFID over this sort of tipping point where it becomes really compelling to implement it. Right, right. right. and it makes it makes sense for the, the retailer investing in that technology as well because it's able to do more on top of just the things, the functions that you were talking about for the merchandiser, or for the retailer. Exactly, itself. you get these side benefits. Like we didn't yeah. build it to like eliminate theft. It just so happens that kind of theft goes away in this scenario, right? Like if you would have stuck a thing in your pocket and walked out and not paid for it before, now you stick it in your pocket and when you walk out, you pay for it, right? Yeah. So. And you pretty much know the inventory of the store the whole time. Which exactly. has always been the benefit of RFID. RFID has benefits on its own. Right. And now you're adding this in. So yeah. you're walking in. Do you have to, is it a gated entry to walk in at all? No, you're just walking right in. No and gates. And you're only and so, walking out a, at a checkout. Exactly. And so we've had gated and gateless entry in both our computer vision stores yes. and these RFID stores for a long time. Time. So okay. um, one thing that we recognized um, a couple years ago was shoppers have different missions depending on what the type of store is. Yeah, if I'm right. at an arena right, and I want a Coke and I see a store with a Coke on a shelf, yeah. I know darn well what I'm going to do when yeah, I get yeah, that right. store. Right? And so yeah. requiring me to tap a credit card at entry, no big deal, right? Because yeah. I'm right. going to buy the Coke. Right. Right. But if you have a more browse-oriented right. store, right, you're not sure you're, you're going to buy sure something. Gonna and so, you might not yeah. find your size. Right. And, and so you don't want to make someone tap so a great. credit card at yeah. entry in that scenario because Probably. they might not buy anything, yeah. right? And so by choosing sort of the right implementation for the right store, we kind of give the optimal user experience. John, I, I, I don't want to go into the weeds too much on this, so but I'm going to. It's too late. We've <laughs> because, already gone there. No, because I think it's, I think it's really important. And we don't, you know, we don't get to talk to executives like you like all that often. You know, we try as hard as we can, but to have somebody like you is just a really special treat. So thank you again for doing this. But so I'm curious, like as you design this experience. Is the elimination of the cash wrap causing any friction? Like, so I don't have a place to bag my products. I don't have a way to fold them up or, you know, do that thing. Those types of activities that are happening in those types of experiences sometime. Like, how are you guys thinking through that? Yeah, I mean, we try to be flexible about yeah. that. So um, if you go to the RFID merch store at the Miami yeah. Dolphins Stadium, yeah. you'll find that they have bags 
you know, spread throughout the store. So if you're picking up, you know, three or four things and you go, oh, I think I might want a few more things. You can just grab a bag, okay. plunk your stuff All in right. it. And again, when you go through that gate, it right. doesn't matter if it's in a bag, yeah, if right. you're wearing it or whatever, we're going to charge you correctly for it. Right. So it um, I think, again, it's that flexibility. Like we can't assume that every shop or mission is the same, right. right? Sometimes you're going in to grab one Coke. Sometimes you're going in to grab, you know, four beverages and a bunch of hot dogs and some pizza for your family. And right. each one of those is sort of a different experience. And as this evolves, then it goes into the fitting room with you too. Right. You know what pro or what products are going into the fitting room with yes. you. That's what I should be saying. And this yes. is a really exciting thing about yeah. the RFID technology. Each item has a unique serial number on it in our store. So right. it's not that there's one, one standard RFID tag for every large pair of blue jeans in the store. Right each pair of jeans has its own unique ID. Wow. And so when you walk out of the store and you it's charged to your credit card, if you come back to return that thing, we can say like, is this the specific pair of jeans that you bought from this store with this credit card? Which is great for merchants as they you know try to understand the flow of goods resale, and, and returns resale, as well. Resale potential yeah. on too, validation yeah, yeah. or verification exactly. of the it's, products that you're selling. You know, wow. you buy a $250 hockey jersey, right? right. You want to sell it on the market afterwards? Like yeah. you can prove you that it's an authentic, it's authentic $250 hockey jersey. Right, so. it's so brilliant. Wow. Where, where do you see this going in terms of, I mean, it, it makes sense from you know, you have fanatics or someone who's the, the merchant in this case selling their, making sure that they're investing in putting the RFID tags in those products. Where do you see this going as you open that up to more retailers and say, you know, with a department store setting or something? Yeah, I mean, I'm constantly surprised by where this stuff goes. So yeah. I'm, I'm maybe not the best predictor of the future. When I started at Amazon in 2004, <laughs> right, we were books, music, and videos, right? Now we're selling everything, right? right? Um, I mean, I fundamentally believe that like autonomous retail or checkoutless retail, frictionless retail, whatever you want to call it, like it is the future, right? I don't know whether it's the future, you know, three years, five years, 10 years yeah. from now, but if you talk to anyone that goes to one of these stores, they describe the experience as magical, right? Yeah. Like, uh, and, you know, magical experiences, I think, just win out over the long term. And right. so I think the day will come when, you know, department stores or almost any type of merchandise yeah. you can you can think of will be sold in this way. Now, I think there will be a whole ton of new technologies that need to be brought to bear to do right. that. And yeah. so like today we have, yeah. you know, video, we have shell sensors, we have RFID, but like we're by no means done, you know, on discovering new technologies to do this. So when my team comes to me and they say like, hey, we've got an idea about how we could enable new merchandise type X with technology yeah. Y, I'm like, okay, let's see if we can do it. I give my right arm to get under the hood of that. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. God. Okay. All right, so, so I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to get practical for a second because yeah. Ann and I can geek out with the best of them on this as, as we've done and yes. excitingly so. So I want to, I want to ask you this before we let you go is what isn't working though? Like what have you found that maybe isn't working or that you're still wanting to tweak to make a better experience for the end consumer? Well, I think like what we've discovered so far is that there are four really compelling value propositions for autonomous retail that, okay. that we're really sure about. Okay. So, so one is a scenario of increased throughput. So that would be your standard stadium store, right? If there's a line for beers and I can make that line go twice as fast, I can make a lot of money for that okay. store and I can make a lot of fans really happy. Um, a second one is reducing shrink, right? So right. if there's a store with high theft and just because our cameras are good at knowing who took what, the rate of theft goes down, it can pay for the technology, right? Yep. Or like we talked about extended operating hours. If right. I couldn't afford to staff right. a store overnight, like I can extend the hours of that store to make make the profit, the, the ROI story work mm -hmm. out. So, so, so far we kind of zone in with each store we look at, we say, okay, can we see like a path to ROI with one or more of these sort of value realization stories, right? Yeah. Um, and you know, I think as the cost of the technology comes down, the number of stores where the positive ROI works out expands. And so, like like any sort of new technology, yeah, right. I think there's a set of, of stores that it's great for now, but that set will expand more and more over time. Like at, at Amazon, you know us, right? Like AWS has this history of like reducing price and reducing right, price right. and reducing price, and like that'll continue yeah, to happen continue. over time, and you'll see this more and more places. Wow. Uh, is there anything you haven't told us or that like, you can it, it, tease us for all something all next? Yeah, right. No, yeah. like, yeah, what, what, but is there, I mean, in, in, re in truthfulness, like, is there anything that you are excited about that's coming up next? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm excited about ex expanding to more and more verticals and seeing how this fits. Like, we've okay. expanded to healthcare, as, as we yeah. talked about earlier. Yep. We've also expanded to universities over the yep. course of the last year. That, yeah. mm -hmm. And like, 
probably not surprising to anyone. Turns out, like college students are really good at adopting new technologies, yeah, right. Right. much faster yeah. than we ever expected. And so, I think you're going to see it explode there as well. Okay. Um, you know, we're seeing growth everywhere, though. Airports like, too. Right? Airports Airport, more than that's my favorite use case yeah. personally. That's yeah, the more than a dozen, like a dozen most. Hudson stores yeah. with this technology yeah. in it, as well as other sort of airline, airport merchants. You know, um, and the other thing that's really exciting for me is like nothing sort of indicates where this is going more than like sort of expansion at existing customers. Like we launched with a single store at Lumen Field in Seattle. Yeah. Uh, in 2022, we got nine stores in that stadium now, both Vision and RFID. Did not right? know that and either. Like yeah. They don't go from one store to nine stores unless they're it's making working. money with that. And right? those stores are getting progressively bigger too, right? In terms of the size of their operation, I'm assuming. Is that true? Exactly, yeah. yeah. And, and customers are adopting that's, that that's technology. That's a test. Exactly. Yeah. And that's, that's one of the funnest things to watch is I when bet. you see a customer teaching another customer how to use this thing where someone will be standing at a gate and they'll be like, oh, this looks different. I'm not sure what's going on. The customer goes, no, it's great. You're going to get a beer in 10 seconds yes. if you just tap your credit card I was going to say, John, that's the thing. I think that's the real tell for customer adoption. Like once they started putting it in stadiums and it was the threshold to yeah. getting people to get a beer faster, you're going to get... That's nothing what, speeds up adoption. Nothing no. crosses the chasm faster, right, John? <laughs> Not at all. Fast <laughs> right, right, right. But I mean, that's what is exciting to work on this technology. I loved working on the website back in 2004 because like my friends use it, right? And they, you know, they tell me what they think of it. And I love working on this now because it's like, I don't know, I have friends who like going to sports and yeah. are in universities and work at hospitals and they're like, you know, your technology is like really changing the game. Awesome. And so it's uh, super awesome. fun from that regard. Well, we are going to have to have you back. Oh my I, gosh. 100% going to have to have you back. Thank you for your time today. Cool, yes. awesome. Such a great interview. Thank you so Learned much. Learned so much. Again, John Jenkins, the VP of Amazon at Just Walk Out. Man, these guys are making it happen. They're doing it in a really smart way. I'm, I'm still processing everything I just learned <laughs> in this interview. All right, and that closes us up for today. Day it two, does. we'll be back day three tomorrow. Oh, man, for all those watching, as always, be careful out there.